Your someday starts today. It's time to explore and test the newest science, methods, and trends for creating a life you love with your host, Tanya MFK. Welcome to My Design Life. Welcome to My Design Life, where we bring you realistic ways to create your best life now and then test them to see what really works. I'm your host, Tanya MFK, and I'm so glad you're here. We are here every other week, so make sure to click that follow and subscribe button to be notified when a new show is up. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, My Design Life Podcast, and TanyaMFK.com. Now, last show, we met with the one and only Violet Brown. While she may not be a household name, all the people she has supported and opened doors for certainly are. From the Black Eyed Peas, Dr. Dre, and NWA, to Whitney Houston and Jenna Jackson, she has been part of your life in one way or another. She graciously met with me in a special episode to share her stories of perseverance, taking chances, and starting over. If you missed it, make sure to go back and check the episode, Lessons from Hip Hop Royalty, and be inspired to belong in any place you want to be. And now for today's show, we're going to dive in into understanding energy and how to manage it in order to live out the best version of ourselves. Here's our conversation. Welcome to My Design Life. My guest today is a woman of many talents. Growing up in a business-minded community in India, she was surrounded by the mindset and support of a you-can-do-it attitude. A 20-year marketing veteran, she left her 9-to-5 job to combine her skills with mindset coaching to support a new wave of entrepreneurs. Never one to stop learning and growing, she is also a yoga teacher and studies the power of energy to direct everyday habits. Today, teaching us how to harness energy to change our lives, please welcome Prouty Kaufman. Hi, Hi Prati. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm excited too. I can't wait to talk about energy. I, I love that topic. Yes, yes. Well, and I'm glad we said that because I really want to start by addressing the elephant in the room. Energy is one of those vague terms. And for many people, it's something largely misunderstood. And I know for myself, coming from California, the word gets thrown around by guru wannabes and hipsters when they're referring to the vibe of their latte. So as a lover of science, I know that energy is a very real thing. But boy, is it hard to change that knee-jerk reaction. So can you guide us a little through what you mean by energy and then what we're going to learn today? Sure. And, and just and because I'm also very scientific, you know, so it's not that the aura energy, you know, I don't read any of those things. It's a, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's a tangible energy we all carry within us. So scientifically, it's proven that 40 billion years ago, when the stars were formed, okay, and when the stars get hot and they, 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 they kind of disintegrate, you know, that's how humans and trees and everything was formed. So we are basically stardust, you know, and that's proven yes. by science. Yes. So what that means scientifically is that we are carrying the energy of all that with us, generation to generation, because, you know, energy just keeps transferring. It's, it's not destroyed ever. So you just transfer it in a different form. So that's the energy I talk about. It's very scientific. Yes. It's not all like, I mean, I'm nothing against it. I do all of that, but it's really <laughs> saying that, you know, we all have energy. Let's figure out, you know, what kind of energy are we carrying and is it serving us in our life? Yes. Yes. No, I love that. And I love it. Like, I, I, I like the feeling. I love the spiritual stuff. But, you know, there's one of those things I think some people automatically shut off when they think you're just kind of being woo-woo. And, and the truth is, this energy, like, like Brathy just said, guys, it's a very real scientific proven thing that we have and that is felt and affects what's around us and what we do. And so I'm really excited. So tell us a little more about what we're going to learn today about harnessing, managing it, all of, all of these great things. Yeah, so consciously or unconsciously, right? We are moving through all. So let, let me just backtrack. So I am certified in a thing called energy in depth, energy leadership in depth assessment, ELI, which is a proprietary energy assessment from IPAC, Institute of Professional you know, Excellence and Development. And this assessment was created by the founder of, the, of IPAC, Bruce Schneider. And he's very scientifically, 25 years of research, he put that in. Mm -hmm. So it's a very objective um, assessment, you know. It doesn't yes, talk yes. about personality or it doesn't put you in a box. Mm -hmm. It's saying you 
uh, you have all these seven levels of energy within you, okay? The only thing you need to realize is what energy, are you moving it you know, with awareness or not, right? Mm -hmm. And whatever level of energy are you are in, is it serving your life right now? If it's not, then what do you need to do to shift? Right, right. What are you bringing to the table, really, you know? energetically speaking, what are you bringing to the table? And I think people can understand that with like moods or you can understand that when people don't say something and yet you can feel kind of oh, tension or something like, you know, we all have an energy about us. It's all there. Very true. And I think if you look back at your life, any of the you know, listeners, you know, and have you ever been like, saw a stranger and you're like, oh, I don't like this person. You know, mm -hmm. that's energy you're yeah. feeling. Yeah. Or you're like, oh, I don't think I should do that right now. And, you know, or you get this feeling you need to call someone, you know, this is all energy traveling. Yes. These are through thoughts, through feelings. And this is a real thing, you know, yeah. we experience it every day. You know, it's funny too, is it's, it, we have an easy time somehow accepting it um, with dogs. And I'm going to explain, you know, I think a, a lot of people here, like dogs can just tell they have a sense of a good person and everyone's like, yeah, that's really cool. I and they, and we, we don't question that. We just believe that. But for some reason, when it comes to us, we're like, oh, is that weird? Are we being too weird? Like, guys, it's all part of it. It's all part of it. So, so yes, please. So tell us what, um, from what I understand, there's, there's like seven levels for us to really be aware of and understand how, how we move in between and what they are. And, and it, a lot of this is just about learning about ourselves right now, isn't it? Yes. So these seven levels, again, the idea is not to say, you know, one level is better than other. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is, there are some levels which will bring you more energy and some which are going to drain you. But there's no way you can be in, more, you know, like you can choose to be just in one level all the time. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, you're going to continuously shift. So idea of this talk is that you become aware of your energy. So you stay in the levels which are detrimental to your mm -hmm. health or your mental being or, you know, your own well-being or it's not serving you. Then you start to kind of stay in it less. So right. it doesn't mean that always, you know, uh, they're going to go away. So this. Um, level one, you know, which is a victim mode. Now, which mode? One more time. Victim. Okay. You know, victim. victim. Mode is, yes. Is okay. It, you know, you're, you're very much of that. You know, you're angry at the world, or you've given up on life. You you go through these feelings like nobody loves me. You know, nobody cares. Like everything's you know, against me. Yes. It's a. It's one of those level of energy where you just feel drained all the time as you, you really think you you bring no value to the table. Mm. Even if you do, nobody values what you bring and nobody cares even if you bring something. So right. it's, it, it's one of those energy where it's, you know, it can be very useful in a situation like a domestic abuse, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, 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 or somewhere where you, you are at risk of something, you know, and right. then, you, it will help you get out of it, you know, right. or, or at least get some help. Yeah, because you have to at least recognize that you're in the victim place to know. So, so I, and I want to bring this up. So what she's saying, guys, is like, it's not a, like, oh, look at you. You're in the victim, like, energy. You've screwed up. It's like, no, this is a place that some of us at different times in our life may very well visit and, and find ourselves in. And being aware of that is, is all we really need to know because once we're aware of it, go, okay, this is where I'm at. That's when we're aware, like in the domestic abuse situation, we know to get help or we can recognize, man, this is the mindset I'm in. It's time to move out. Um, so it's not about a shame. It's not like she said that she started by saying this. There's no right or wrong. It's just there's different places we, we are at. And so recognizing that we're in the victim one can actually be the thing that moves us to, I guess, another level, another place at yeah. some point. Or yeah, some just stay in it for whatever reason, right? right? Mothers are really good at playing victim. I play mm -hmm. that all the time to get rest, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh my God, you guys don't do anything and I'm not, you know, I'm so sick, you know, or your body will get sick, you know, if yeah. you get yeah. that more. So, we, you know, we mothers are good at playing victim to kind of just say, all right, at least I can spend two hours in bed today. Mm -hmm. And then everybody can rally around you. So it's really knowing, but so often we go in it with our awareness right we are just there we are actually feeling like a victim right mm -hmm. not playing a victim which is different right so right. i think that's that, that's that's the first level of energy okay and then 
second level of energy is you know it's i call it you know it's about being angry at the world okay. like you're really angry you know you are you're in a space where like i am the only one who can do things right mm -hmm. you know i am the only one who can um who knows you know what's right and i if i have to do something it has to be done by me there's nobody who can match up to me right or um, is it like almost like an arrogance or is it like a me against the world mentality? Me against the world mentality. Okay, and, you know, okay. Like, they're driving like every, everybody on the road. If any, everybody, mm. somebody wants to cut you off or somebody wants to just make your life miserable, right? You're now in that kind of a place where it's just full of anger all the time. Right. So instead of being the victim, which might be more of a sad kind of woe is me feeling, you're at the, you're you're almost still in a victim sense where it's like everything's against me, but instead of being like, I'm a victim, you're like, oh, I'm gonna get you. I'm I'm gonna, you know, I'm after you. I'm against this. I'm gonna Okay, okay. I think we've been there in, in LA traffic. I've been there. <laughs> yes. So that's why the level two energy, you know, LA traffic, it's it's a very complex emotions you're living, you know. Mm -hmm because you're so much fighting against yourself and against the world all the time. So when you're fighting against the world, you're basically fighting always against you. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but they say the world is your mirror. So the, the level one, you're in a survival mode. Level two, you're just going through complexity, the complexity of emotions all the time. Okay. And, okay. And that energy again is very draining. Okay. And yeah. this energy, believe it or not, is the most common energy around the world. Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I think there's like a bazillion situations I can think or walking through anywhere and, and see that happening and manifesting itself, you know, that in that mentality that people have, you know, fighting against the waiter to, like you said, the traffic or anything that like, like they're, they're fighting for themselves almost. Yeah. Um, so with this energy, again, you got to decide, right? Like, is it really serving you? No, mm -hmm, do you mm -hmm. really, is it the truth or is it our own like, reality we are creating? Like, is it really, truly everybody's out to get you or not? So, right. um, it is, it can, like I said, it's, it's a great energy in terms of when people want to managers want to get work done in the workplace, they can, they can, they can make people work through fear, but mm -hmm. never, um, uh, inspired energy right people don't feel inspired to follow but they follow out of fear if that right is. right absolutely yeah absolutely i think talk about that a lot in parenting you know that you know we can try to get them to follow the rules by threatening you're going to get spanked you're going to get this or we can teach in a way that shows like this is why this is the rule and and they want to follow it because they want what's they learn what's best for them so true. I mean, you, you nailed it, you know, as mothers, like, like I think there's such a relatable thing, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Level three energy is called rationalized, you know? So you're in, it's a, so, you know, there, there are two categories, like catabolic and anabolic energy, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, catabolic is basically draining and anabolic is, it gives you a um, lot of energy back. Right. So anytime right. you have an anabolic energy, you feel more energetic. It could be, you know, walking, uh, in, in a sense, you know, seeing a sunset or walking on the beach or doing something you love, you feel mm -hmm. more of that. But yes. any catabolic where there's an emotion like, ah, oh, I'm not feeling good, your anger, anything which drains you is, you know, catabolic. Mm. So, first two energies are pure catabolic energy. There is no gain, it's only draining. Okay. Mm -hmm. The third energy rationalizes kind of moves to a little bit anabolic only because you're taking more. Um, you, you're, you're really taking responsibility for your own actions and thoughts and emotions now. So okay. because level first two levels, you're blaming others, right? You're right, right. Somebody else is responsible. But level three, you kind of say, you know what, I am whatever I'm feeling, I'm responsible. So you mm -hmm. rationalize everything. So you may, you know, here, here's an example, you know, okay, oh my God, my, you know, my husband probably, you know, forgot to do the dishes because he must have been so tired. But mm -hmm. deep inside, you're not happy about it. Right, right. Like you have an understanding, but you're not, you're still like, oh, it was against me. <laughs> yeah. So you're holding that. So you are kind of, you'll forgive people, you know, you're really good at reconciliation, you know, you kind of, because the idea is to move forward, but mm -hmm. it's more for you than anybody else, right? So the energy is just like, I need to just move on, mm -hmm. but it's still not total forgiveness. It's not like, I actually feel like, I actually feel like how tired you are, you know? Mm -hmm, right, right. 
the, you you hold that back somewhere in there. Right, you know, right. You might really do that, you know. <laughs> so so things like that. It could be at work. You know, you got a you know in a work situation and your manager says something, and you just do it because you know you rationalize. But you're not you feel you feel like that's not fair on me. Right, right. You're gonna still feel like complaint or upset about it or frustrated about it, like. Yeah. Right. So it hasn't, it's, it's not like a, you're not coming from joy. It's not coming from being okay. It's still something that is sucking your energy or not putting you in an ener a good energetic space. Right. So you're still not like at your best, I would say in that moment. No, you're not because mm -hmm. and it's also, it's a very, it's a, it's an energy which you have to really, because we can, we are so, we are all masters of rationalization. Mm -hmm. okay. You really, we have to really pay attention to this energy. Because we think this can make us feel noble or look at me, I'm so forgiving and I'm so this, oh, right? right? And it can make you feel like you are better than others also because you're always like just finding, uh, working, let's, let's work together, but you're not really feeling it. So right. you rationalize your behavior a lot or also you take on other people's crap and you rationalize it. Mm, mm, yes. So it can go either way, either way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when you're rationalizing it, it can feel really noble, really like, oh, look at me. I've come from a high place and, you know. Mm, oh, right. So it's very so, ego serving in a lot of ways. Yes. You got it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I always, I, I've got like one statement in each of this. So mm -hmm. level one statement is I'm a loser, right? Okay. Forget about it. Level two is I win, you lose. Ah, right. Makes sense. Always. Okay. <laughs> level three is I win, you may win. Okay. But I have to win first. So it's right. always about like winning, you know, and having the upper hand and having, so it can really, these are the people who are fixers. They want to fix everybody. Mm. Right. They, they, they or like somebody who, I almost think is somebody who's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry that you messed that up, right? Like, yeah. you know, like, like, well, I'm, I know I'm sorry that you totally messed up. So it's still you, I'm still winning and I'm the bigger person because I am apologizing, but really yeah. I'm putting it on you. So yeah, yeah. yeah. got it, it's got it. Again, a very common energy in marriage with children, we want to fix, we want to fix everybody, right? Mm. Uh, and that can really, you know, I, I've heard like a friend tell me like when we're talking about like, oh, now I know my wife, my husband keeps telling me that you just want to be in control all the time. Like you never listen to me. You just always, anytime I say something, you don't want to listen. All you want to do is just give me suggestion on how to do better. And mm. if I don't do it, you get mad about it. You see? So yeah. level three, you're like, I know what's right for you. But right? you think you're like, but I'm helping. I'm helping you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But by helping, you're also, you know, putting them down and, you know, like get, being in control. That's the other self, you know, ego serving thing. That's yeah. a tricky one. That one, I mean, we're only at number three. And that's like, I think a lot of us can identify with different parts of those scenarios that we've absolutely been in. Yes. And I, that's why I'm talking the longest on number three, because this is so easy mm -hmm. to confuse with number five. And I will go more into it, but it's such a tricky energy. If mm -hmm. you don't pay attention, it just comes right in. Yeah. In the, in the guise of being nice to others. And each of these levels, I, I know we're still at the beginning here, but each of these levels, I think I could hear somebody probably asking like, okay, well, what do I do? But the main thing right now is, is the awareness of it, right? That's the power of being able to know to get in or out of these energy levels is just knowing what they are, catching them and understanding them for what they are, right? Like just, exactly. you know, okay. Yeah. And then that's really where we have the change. And so, and I know we'll go into more of that later. I just wanted to take that in. Cause again, I think most people are like, oh my gosh, that's me. What am I, what should I do then? Well, everyone right now, you just need to recognize it for what it is. And then we'll learn some more later. <laughs> and this is not about doing ever in life. Right. See, the, anything doing, there's a rule in life, guys, you know, to break the rules, you need to understand the rules. Mm. You can't shift unless you become aware first of where I am and is it really right for me? So right. no changing. It is not a judgmental thing. It is not really to sit down. Oh, I, I need to change it. No, no, no. But just enjoy where you are and learn more about their energy and see how is it serving you. Okay. Right. Maybe serving you. It, it, it's a great uh, energy level three at a workplace. 
Mm. Sometimes you have to rationalize in order to just get out of something. So please, like, just this, you're right. Like, this is not about fixing anything, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good. Because I know, I want to go right to like, well, what do I do? So the, uh, right now, guys, it's awareness. So we just need to really soak in and understand where these are. And then we'll, we'll, we'll probably naturally figure it out from there. <laughs> yes. And uh, you, yeah, you have all the answers within you. You don't need anybody to, you know, uh, give you those answers. So, <laughs> so that comes the level four energy which is kind of, you know, more anabolic than catabolic, which is mm -hmm. called generosity. These are the people who love to help. And mm. we have so many people, you know, doctors, engineers, you know, doctors and social workers and teachers, anybody who is into any of the places they're serving, you know, running nonprofits and all that. And their core emotions is really, how can I help you? What mm. can I do? to help you, you know? What is the best thing for you? The only thing which may create a little bit of drain here is when we do this to please nice. uh, others, or we also sometimes can do this so that we can be appreciated and admired by how, how amazing we are and how right. good we are. And or how and, much we sacrifice. Oh yeah, the feeling like the martyr, <laughs> right? You know, it's so great. And, so if you look at all the social workers, the doctors, like they are overworked. They are, they are like, they, they, they do so much and then they complain also. When, but when they go down the energy level, this is one and two, they will complain and they will get so drained that they are no help to others at that moment. Right, right. So, so each of these levels I have, have this, like, and I, and I just to drive the point again, that there's no right or wrong. If you guys right. notice every single one of these have, have a great part that can be harnessed as a great part. And the, and there's another side that can drain you that can be the drain. So like we mentioned in number three, this can be great at work. This can be times where you need to, to do this. Now here we are in generosity. And I think automatically we're like, well, that's a wonderful thing. And you're like, well, it can be unless it's coming from here. Unless it's coming from the other side of the spectrum, which is when it can be draining. Again, not right or wrong, but is it serving you if it's draining you? Yeah. You know? So it's just fascinating. Yes. And that's where the awareness of it comes. When any energy starts to drain you, do I need to shift out of it? Because you do need yeah. to shift out of it then. You know, yeah. if it's creating too much drain, if it's affecting the way you think, the way you live, mm -hmm. everything you do and it keeps you in a place of beating yourself up, then you share, yeah, totally, right. you need to keep that. Like, yeah. You don't want to be in an energy which is not serving you, forget about the others. Yeah, if yeah, because you if you're no good, you can't help anyone else. You know, if yes. you're that social worker doing the social good and then it's draining you, draining you, draining you to you being miserable, maybe not even doing your job is great, then it outweighs the, gener the quote unquote generosity, right? It starts to outweigh that. Like it's not, this isn't good for you. It's not that the generosity itself isn't good, but this is draining you. It's time to maybe do something else or, and I don't mean you have to quit your job, but maybe it's time to tend to yourself. <laughs> you may have to recognize I'm, in a, I'm not in the good end of this, this energy right now. Yeah, totally. And towards the end, I, we can talk about a little bit of how we all manage energy. Yes. I can. I can only share how I do it, but I think each of us is different and that's why there's no formula I can give you, but there is a basic way to do this, okay? Okay. Uh, so we, we can talk about that yes, you know, a little yes. later. Uh, That'd be great. Uh, and then, you know, so we have talked about level four energy. Again, it's an amazing energy. Most of the people, if you look at, you know, Mother Teresa, you know, um, they all have, but they tap into this energy. They know not to let it drain them. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, there's a, there's a self-awareness part to it, okay? Yeah. And then comes the level five energy. So again, I'm going to repeat, level one is I'm a loser. Level mm -hmm. two is, you know, I win, you lose. Level three is I win, you may win. Mm -hmm. Level four is let me help, help you win. It's nothing to do with me. Like it's always yeah. let me help you win. Right. Now level five comes more about harmony. We all win. That's nice. <laughs> so, Level five is where most of the leaders in the world are, right? I'm talking about really good leaders, okay? Mm -hmm. Because that's where they can look at the big picture and they inherently, they know and they feel that there's nothing wrong in this world or there are no, like nobody needs fixing. They, everybody is exactly where they need to be and 
they tap into each person's or individuals, whatever their strength, they see more of a strength in each rather than the weaknesses. Mm. And they, they work with the strength you bring to the table rather than harp on what's wrong. Right, or right. What needs to be fixed, you know? It's like the difference between a manager and a leader, right? They say the manager is going to be like, well, you did this wrong. You got to fix this. You got to do this. Where a leader is going to go, look, this is your strength. Let's see what we, how we can hone that in. Because the more strong they do and hone that in, that other stuff will fix itself that a manager would be pointing at. I mean, that's kind of what I've heard before, like that description. Yeah, totally. And I mean, I mean look around. Look at the great leaders around you. Mm. They are like that. They lift people up. Yeah. In your yeah. presence, you feel like inspired to do your best, not because you have to, because right. they are putting their best and they're believing in you that much. You know, right. Right. they accept you for where you are, not what you can be for them. So it's a it's a very different you know energy now, but it can be very similar to level three and level five. They're very similar in their approach, and level five are known as fixing things, but they don't go with the mindset they need to fix things. They just can see the big picture and they can see a solution. So they're more solution focused mm -hmm. than the focused. Right. Because fixing focuses on the problem. Whereas, you know, solution can take another part of it. Like you're saying, the strengths that they can see in somebody and use those to move forward. And, and that alone, the, the problems can fix themselves. You know, if you see that I, I'm good at, you know, with a hammer and then you get my hammer skills better then the problem of the, you know, the, the messed up, you know, wall, I'll eventually already know how to fix. Instead of going, you better go fix that wall. They say, let's get better at your hammer skills. And now I'm able to, to fix that. It's probably a terrible carpentry analogy because it's not my yeah. forte, but like, you know, you get what I'm saying here. It's like, they see it's, it's the same. They're, they're addressing the same situation, but it's going about it completely differently. Yes, because they're looking at you as a perfection. They're not looking at you as what's missing in you. They're mm -hmm. saying, okay, this person, because every one, all of us have our weaknesses and strength. Mm -hmm. They're always focusing on the strength part. They're always focusing on, okay, this person is really good at that. How can I use that in my project? That, you know, mm -hmm. who's good at what and how do we all work as a team and deliver results rather than, you know, they're, so they're always solution focused, they're result focused. They're not so much about, and, and if, Things also they take it as a learning if something didn't go right because they are they are the people who see opportunities in everything. So a lot of entrepreneurs they are like that, right. or you know people who like have multiple businesses because they see opportunity. Yeah. Oh, this is so amazing so because they're always looking at the best possible scenario and right. they want to be part of it. So here is a thing: when you see so much opportunity, you can get in analysis paralysis. Oh yeah. And you can take on too much because there's so much opportunity and can drain you. Then you are spread too thin because yeah. you don't want to miss out on any opportunity, right? You know, you're like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Then you have five projects going on and you're like, oh my God, how do I manage it? Yes. <laughs> Most of the people I meet with, it's just the thing. They don't come to me because they're not capable or they're overwhelmed. They usually come to like, I have so many great things and I don't know where to start. You know, and that's where you have to come and work and sorting them out. It's, it, it's a very special, you know, situation. But yeah, then there's, there's the other side again, right? There's the other side of this wonderful sounding energy and again like I, I just love how it always comes out it, every part of it there's no right or wrong there's just the different spectrum of it and so yeah. there we are is that yeah. you can have the analysis paralysis you can take on too much you can see opportunity everywhere to the point that you're overwhelmed and confused yes and you know and that's why I think it's good to have a tribe I always say in all the levels but having a tribe who can keep you honest you know who can yeah. talk to you or you know like somebody like you who's really good at planning and goal setting and saying okay we will do this let's like really talk about it right let's yeah, yeah. look it. at what we're dealing what with okay, or know? having the coaches the coaches that are there to to call you on it and go look at this is where we're let, let's head here let's are you you know and ask the questions that they are not able to ask themselves right so having those people and the right people and the right mindset to be there around you your your coaches you know friends and family are helpful as well it just i think it really depends on 
the cohesiveness of what everyone understands. You know, they say you are the sum of the five people you hang around. And sometimes we need to make sure that, that people are in the same space, you know, to, to be able to hear us in the way. Because, you know, let's be honest, if we ask our moms, of course, everything we're doing is amazing, you know, or, or vice versa, you know, depending on the kind of mom you have. It's all terrible. So, you know, I, I, it's lovely to have that, right? I would love to specify that that tribe really matters about who you're choosing around to, to lift you up and be honest with you. Exactly. So, but it's overall a pretty great, great energy because you end up winning more, right? You always, right. you always, and you, you, you want to win together. It's never like, oh, I'll win and you, it's, right. a, it's a really team focus and people focus and they love people. And the best thing, if you do, if you don't see any mistakes, you know, it's the world is perfect, which is yeah. amazing to feel that yeah. way. Right? So <laughs> overall, a pretty good energy. So you know, you guys have to just know, and we all are going in and out of all the energies. Remember that, yes. okay? Yes, that's the thing. I remember you you mentioning this when we had talked before that, you know, we we never, we're not necessarily always in one place. We will float to different places. We'll find ourselves because of different circumstances in our, in our life. And just knowing where you are is where the power is. Exactly, that's it. Um, and then that brings me to level six energy, which is oneness, mm. which is saying, you know, um, there's no winning or losing. They, they, this is a level of energy where I almost feel like scientists tap into, like any inventor or anybody who has come up like a painters or artist, right? They go into this deep thing, uh, like there's no, you know, which is really seeing the world as a perfect, like everything is good, you know? Mm -hmm. Everything is a process for them. It's like this whole, everything is part of the process, whether you're a little bird or you're a little, like they see this full oneness in with, within them and in others so they can they can feel others in them and other you know so so it's, it's one of those exchange when you like your your painting is so deep into it that like you become one with it right right you are a beautiful dancer when they dance and you kind of you're looking at it and you get so mesmerized that you kind of forget yourself at that moment right you're or, just kind of in it you're just part of it yeah. Yeah. Well, I also think when you say like there's no win or lose, it's like when you're able to be in also that mentality uh, where where you see people who are really successful, really reach a different level. They're not in that competitiveness of the I win, you lose, and they're they're, but they're more in the like Ray Dalio um, does this. You know, I think is at this level where he there is no mistake. He literally, we can say that and we see all the nice like quotes on Instagram, but he really like lives the idea that there are no mistakes. And he looks at everything that happens and goes, there's a lesson here. I either progress forward or I learn. There's no win or lose. It's, yeah. it just keeps going. It just is, you know? Yeah. Um, so from like a business standpoint, guys, if you haven't checked out Ray Dalio, definitely check him out. But it, I love that explanation he has is that we need to let go of this. I failed. Like there is no... There is no such thing as failure because there's only lessons, you know, so. Yeah. And they really, they, they just like, there's a joy because they know nothing is permanent, you know? Yes, it's, yes. There's the wisdom they carry just, because of that. They, <laughs> they just move through life as if there's nothing. And it's very rare to be mm -hmm. in this continuous thing. But we do find ourselves in it a lot, you know, on yeah. and off. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, all of a sudden, you just, everything seems perfect and you think you can take on anything. And yeah. You know, kind of observe those when you feel that, like, how do you increase that kind of um, more of that joy in your life? So, yeah, I think the problem comes when we expect once we hit those as we go, well, I've arrived and it's always going to be like this. And then and then you go into the other energy level and you're like, why? Oh, my God. And you're like, no, 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 you're always going to come in and out. It's OK. And if you expect that, then you're like, it's OK. I'll get to level you know, six again. Don't worry. But if yeah. we think like, oh, I'm at level six, I've I've arrived. You're like, no, honey, no, this is just a place you're going to visit. It's going to be great, but you're going to leave at some point, yeah, you know, and yeah, then you yeah, can come so, back. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it would be funny if people say, oh, I've arrived, because if you're at level six, you won't even feel like you arrived. You know what right. I mean? Like, right. That's true. Like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, so then you're dealing with still the other levels of energy in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, um, and you, you said something, you know, the people who are like, they truly believe. So if you look at, all the scientists, you know, I mean, let's talk about not even a scientist, people like, you know, J.K. Rowley, you know, 14 mm -hmm. times rejected, and you know, yeah. before you have a successful book, they didn't give up. Right. They did not give up, you know. Walt Disney was fired from his job for not being creative enough. Mm -hmm. They did not give up on the dream because of that. Um, Dyson, uh, the vacuum guy. Yes, yes. 600 times 
he failed before he got a good uh, vacuum cleaner, which right. made him a millionaire. So he didn't say 600 times, like, oh, should I fail? He said, oh, I need, I, okay, there's another thing I need to add to make it perfect. Right, right. So he just, you know, the whole thought process is, okay, I learned this now. I'm going to apply it and make it better and make it better and make it better. Like, they're always going to the next situation because mm -hmm. they're going to be the next best situation. They don't go with that, oh, I failed, so now I'm done. Like, I don't have to do it. You know, right, so. right. Same with the business people. I mean, as much as, you know, Amazon guy, right? He, he started with the books. You know, mm -hmm. again, iterations after so many things failed in there, right? He or added other products which did not work. Then he, you know, you, you have to do trial, but they don't say just because this thing failed, I have failed. Right, right. It's huge. It's so important to see that. So, so let's level six energy, you know? Yeah. So this is a really good energy in business people. For entrepreneurs, I think we really need to like tap into it more. Yes, um, yes. But as usual, they're negative. These people can come across as really cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> because they love everyone. So imagine being married to this person who will never say love you because they're like, I can live in a jungle and still love you. Don't you feel it? Right. <laughs> that could cause some problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they can come as very aloof, actually, believe it mm. or not. They're just, they don't feel the need to talk. They don't feel in that space they need to and they, they are they are typically called weirdos it's people mm. who are very much living in energy most of the time they are weirdos right, that's right. What they're known as okay <laughs> are almost like too cool like oh they're too cool to you know feel or say or do these things right so yeah i could see that that's not we don't look at that too too wonderfully <laughs> Only because we don't understand it. We don't right, get it. Really, right, right. That's all it is. We don't understand how they can be so into something and really be okay eating and feeling so much joy with a simple food. Like, are you nuts? So yeah. this was, I think it's our understanding. And that brings to level seven, which is even cuckoo, right? It's okay, like, right. it's a word for it. It is called beyond duality, right? Uh, and these are the names I've given it. They are not by IPAC. This is where they say, what winning and what losing what it's just an mm. illusion it's all created by men mm. observe it have fun and you're just an observer so they never identify with anything they're doing so, so the opposite yeah they just they think they they are here right and they're just part of the process and but they are just more observer you know they're observing, they are the observer, and they are the observe, the, the, the object. They're the three things, they all merge together here. Like there's nothing for them, nothing will shake them up. And you know, there are not many people who are in this energy, who can live in this energy constantly. Mm, yeah. But I think all our, our uh, re you know, religious leaders probably were, you know, they came from that place, whether Jesus Christ or Buddha. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And these are just my personal guesses, right? They came, they, they always talk about there's no everybody's same we all like lovey you know they yeah yeah i know like after like a week of vipassana i did 10 day oh, vipassana oh, yeah oh, yeah oh, so like i think i like during that time you had that feeling and then you're like wow but then you then you get back on the bus and you're you're back you know at the thai street market like eating pad thai so every at least for me that was my situation so it was uh so it's like yeah you can visit there i definitely felt like i visited there and you're like this is how it's always going to be i'm going to be like this you know guru walking around but it, it doesn't you know i came out of that energy as well so yeah you visit there for a moment and then and yeah. then you're out yeah it's like if we all tap into it but we don't even know because it's such a scary energy. Most of the time we are going to go there and we're like, oh no, this feels weird. I'm going to get right, out of it. Right. Because it just seems like literally you think and things are going to happen. Like yeah. level six, you're already having that, right? There's no winning or losing. You're already, it's an instant manifestation phase, right? Mm -hmm, For mm -hmm. them. I mean, this is level. So it can be very scary that you think and something just appeared, right? Like in front of you. And you're like, what? Like, this is too... too <laughs> I'm going crazy. crazy. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then your mind kicks in, you start to doubt yourself and you start to question it instead of accepting it for what it is. So mm. this is a very meditative energy. It is really, you know, I mean, Jesus Christ laughed, right? When he was mm. on the, like, he was not mad. Most people will get mad because he, they don't identify with the body. It's just the body which is going, not their soul, right. not who they are. Like, they're so disconnected to the experiences bodies having, then 
they are having they don't identify with that so right. this is a very different level of energy again you can feel it in meditation you may feel it while walking like i love it when i hike and you, there are times when you feel this like wow well, and there's nothing could ever go wrong like right? this this is it right so uh, you glimpse it but it's a really good energy to tap into when you want to make a decision with your gut mm -hmm. um, like these are the energy when you are not sure what's right or wrong you sit in meditation and allow the decision to come to you i love that so, yeah so these are basic seven levels of energy that's it right you know and just knowing where we are yeah so you yeah. were saying that that after all this you'd have maybe a little bit of tips of kind of how you deal with coming in and out or dealing with the different levels yeah so i've got a few things i have a tribe of people and things i do mm -hmm. so because that i know i have to go through all the energy it's not like i'm you know going to be a saint and not you know live in a cave so right so i have some people like you said which was again I, I loved it like i have some person like my mom right nothing can ever go wrong so anytime i need a boost just a boost like i'm a level one and nobody loves me it doesn't matter you call her she's like you are the best starter ever you are the <laughs> you are awesome and we kind of lift you're like okay i'm good right so having that person you know or having a person you go, oh my God, the whole world is so nasty. You know, nothing is working out. And somebody who kind of can listen to you without judging you mm -hmm. and telling you anything. And they know it's a phase, it's going to go. And they may say, is that really true? Or they may kind of make it light for you. But somebody who can listen to that, that tirade of yours. That, that right, moment, right. That's all you really need, okay? Uh, so having the tribe of people who can, you know, somebody to bounce ideas off. Of, like you're on a level five energy you're coming up with all the new opportunities have a tribe of people you can bounce ideas off yeah yeah so you can so you important can like master it. that's why masterminds are such a huge thing people like if you're not part of one you, you know this this is why those are there you know obviously there's other circles like that as well but in the entrepreneurial you know world um people are like well what do i need that for like so you that that energy you know of what you can bring to other people and have them hear you and respond and, and it's not about seeking the answers sometimes it's just even their feedback even if you don't fully agree it pushes you to continue to think and get more clarity right so exactly. like yeah absolutely really good you know and those are the tips right and if you're level four and if you like to help have boundaries have an mm -hmm. accountability partner who can tell you don't take on this now please yeah no. yeah like, being clear with your goals things. and calling like, you on it yeah like somebody who can make sure that you get to the exercise or somebody who can yeah. make sure that you get to work on time or whatever that takes so these are some ways you can manage and keep this energy really working for you that is one way and second thing, I have some activities I do because not always people are not always accessible. Right. Right. So some activities which really brings me out of any negative energy. So like I like hiking or mm -hmm. meditation. So there are two things I can do. Uh, meditation if I don't have time. That can happen anytime. Pull the car over or whatever, like two minutes, okay? Or three minutes. Just to kind of take some deep breaths and you know, why am I feeling this? Is it really true? Or if I do have time. I'll go out in the nature, even if it's yeah. sitting in the back deck, like whatever it is. So my nature gives me a lot of energy and yeah. in, you know, meditation and chanting. I love listening to good chants, you know, does the sound repetitive yeah. Kind of get yeah. out of something you're feeling. So every, you know, you have some activities you probably enjoy doing, you know, mm -hmm. find those things, you know, when you're feeling kind of create your own little energy plan like and this all comes back to awareness you you're aware that these are the things that help you and i think yes. that's a disconnect is that we we're always searching for these answers you know oh what's the latest thing that the magazine says about the top 10 things i should do for self care and and but it doesn't really matter what their list is because if you don't know what works for you Yes. And it doesn't, those things don't matter. You know, it doesn't matter how many bu bubble baths you take if the bubble bath isn't your thing, you know? Oh. So you have to really know what your thing is. I no, I love this. This is so good. And, I, and we are getting close to, to wrapping up. Did you have anything else before we, we kind of talk about where people can find you? Oh, yes. So you can go to pratikaufman.com. You can find me on Instagram at pratikaufman. You can find me on LinkedIn at pratikaufman. And I would love you to connect with me. If you have questions about energy ever, like talk to me. I love, this is like my favorite topic and it changed everything for me once I start to absorb my energy. So now mm -hmm. I don't take things personally from people. 
if somebody's screaming, I'm like, oh, the person is just, you know, in, in not a good energy space. So okay, right. it's nothing to do with me. So it's really right. great to live. I love that because we talk so much about knowing for yourself, but also the more you know about it, you can also recognize it in others, right? Yeah. That's, and that's you amazing. Things personally because you know yes. that this is just the energy they are in. It's nothing to do with you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so powerful. That's so powerful. Oh, guys, you guys need to talk, talk to her all the time. Well, so for, for my last question, please tell me, what is the assignment that you will have for us to create our best life with energy management this week? So here's the thing, what gives you energy? You know, when you're in a good energy, you feel a lot of joy, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you feel good with life. So here's the assignment I would give you. If every evening, okay, okay, or just take two minutes, like literally it won't take any longer than that, you okay. look through the day and you say, okay, these what brought me joy? Just ask that question what and let me down joy? what brought me joy today. Okay. That's it. And then okay. do that, you know, every day. So what I, I want you, you know, the, the whole idea of exercise is to increase the things which bring you joy. And then mm -hmm. you kind of start to think about, okay, if this is bringing me joy, how do I do more of it? And right. do everything less. Because the more you're in a joy, you're already in a good energy there. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's such a, it's such a simple but powerful question because you do have to look through your day. You have to find the good. You have to find where the joy was because you might have had a day and be like, oh, it was a crappy day. But then when you look back, you know, that, that actually was kind of nice. That, that part was kind of joyful. So I like that part of it too, is that it makes you search for it. And then of course, yeah, when you're aware of it, you start to go, you know what? I do really like that. I, I've had that happen recently, even where I, I realized I really like dancing. Like I really, yeah. really love it. And, yeah. and I, I don't dance. I, I don't go to clubs. Or I don't do any of that stuff. And I was like, I need to find a way to bring that into my life and that's actually part of, of what I've been looking and kind of trying to figure out but I, I wouldn't have known that if I didn't take an assessment of like oh. what are the things that I like so no I love this so for the next yeah. week guys for two minutes we're going to look back on our day and identify the thing that brought us joy and then after we do that we can start to think about how to bring more of that into our life right yeah but it just also makes you think about okay if it's because you will observe every time you feel joy, we, we self-sabotage, okay? Mm. Honestly, 70% of the time, you're going to do activities which feel joy and 30% which may not. But we're all going to focus so much on that 30% than the 70% which actually brought us joy. And every time we feel joy, we're going to feel like, oh my God, I don't deserve it. And right away, you do something which is, you know, kind of to cut it off. Right, and right. That's the, that's the observance part. Just understanding like, okay, if I brought brought me joy why am i not doing more of it right right yeah, right yeah life is too short my goodness yeah. well Prazi, thank you so much for being here thank you for explaining all this and bringing us really this tool um i i just i'm so grateful for you being here um you guys so we have our assignment this week um if you are going to follow along, see how it goes, you can go on My Design Live Show on Facebook and Instagram. And if you wanna join along, please tag us and let us know how you're doing using the hashtag Energy Habits. So uh, if you like this and you wanna see more, make sure that you like or, you know, like or click that subscribe button and be notified each time that a new episode comes out. As always, you can connect with me at Tanya MFK and learn more about our workshop courses and retreats at TanyaMFK.com. Make sure you go and find Prati now, guys. She's open, she's, her door's open, ask her questions, be there. She always has wonderful programs and things going on. So remember, your someday starts today. Make it a good one. I'm Tanya MFK, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us at My Design Life. Catch us every other Monday at 3 p.m. EST. Follow us at Tanya MFK, My Design Life Show, United Intentions Foundation, and UI Media Network. Do you have methods, tips, or hacks to live your best life? Be a guest on our show. Contact us at mydesignlife.show to submit an application.